uh, welcome to the first phone IQT talk. Uh, we're going to discuss the Nokia N9, a Mego based smartphone. Uh, we ran past the specs, um, let's just go through them again. Uh, 1 GHz, a single core processor, 1 GB of RAM, a 3.9 inch AMOLED uh, touchscreen display, 16 to 64 gigs uh, internal hard drive, an 8 megapixel color size lens with HD recording, HTTPS, and NFC. So it's definitely a high end phone. But what I want to discuss with you guys is whether it is a good phone. Whether would you buy it or you buy another one? It's not ultra high end. What I mean by this is that you can get phones with dual core one gigabyte yes, processors. Core processors. So they are better phones. If you look at the phone itself, and I'm sure the viewers will see the phone right, uh, at this moment, you look at it and it's it's a piece of slab. This is what Engadget calls. First, it calls the piece of uh, plastic, and then look at the at the images. They said, okay, this is a very, very nice, it's, um, how do you say, it's, it's glossy, it looks nice. It, uh, you can find it in pink, uh, blue, or, or black. And my question to you is, would you buy it? If yes, why yes? Why not? Uh, let me give you a scenario. Let's say you're at the end of your contract, right? And you get the option of buying a phone with dual core processor. You get the phone, uh, you get the Mego phone, the Nokia N9. Uh, you get other phones. Shahid, what's your opinion? Well, first, if you can look at getting a new phone, Nowadays you've got phones with very high, very high, uh, how can you say, very high end specs. So now you've got phones that have dual core processors, like you said, um, you're getting phones here that's got so much memory on board as well. But now, if you look at the way the operating system utilizes that, that hardware, I mean, um, for instance, you've got a, a lot of old, very old <coughs> operating systems that have died. For, for instance, um, UIQ, not very good with optimization. Um, Symbian is basically done now. I'm still using a Symbian phone. And I'm regretting that because the optimization of the hardware is not very good. So now you've got operating systems that lack and bringing in the hardware. So if you think about it, trying to get the best phone for your user experience would be that. So um, we re haven't really seen the Mego experience per se. It's so. the first one, right? Right. So um, I think this is going to be the test. And by that, um, I mean they really tried it. It's got a very sleek design, those kind of things. But yeah, if you were looking at getting a good phone, I mean Nokia is a very good name. They know what they're doing, so yeah. I'd it's basically down to the operating system, system, according to you. Yeah. Right. Uh, Munib, according to you, um, if you look at the phone, would you, and you see that there are two high-end phones. The difference is a single core and a dual core. Would it make a huge difference to you? I mean, uh, would you say, okay, this will run games better, or you know what? They both look good, they both can last two years with good applications. What would you go for? Firstly, Nokia is uh, from the start, you know, my first phone was actually a Nokia, so I trust the phone and it's a good phone. And it's it's un actually unbreakable, it doesn't actually break it, <laughs> bear, you, know, you know what I mean? So, uh, looking at what you said now, you call, it doesn't actually make a difference for me because I don't play that many games or something like that. So, maybe I, I like the user experience, you know, I like the Windows phone, the way it moves. And it looks good, so I would probably buy the phone not because of its processors, maybe just because it looks, you know, because of its appearance. Uh, and then I don't know, maybe the new software. I have no idea how good it's going to be. So maybe try something new. Yeah. So I probably would buy one. I mean, let's look at you. Uh, would you really judge the the processor for being single core, dual core? Would it make a difference when you choose a phone? I think it would make a difference because phone of the future. How are you going to come up with dual dual core processors? to keep up to speed with uh, different applications being developed. So this could get outdated quicker than thought. Yeah. And then to run other complex operating systems it will need to do go in the future. Definitely. So Nokia has to replay in it and take that into consideration for its future phones. Definitely. So we can pass on to the software or we can actually discuss the NFC. Uh, NFC is not a popular technology by any means. Uh, it's near field communication. Let's just introduce it quickly. Uh, basically it's uh, near field is literally so uh, instead of Bluetooth where you can transmit wirelessly, well, uh, actually we'll go for a break before we uh, move into that. Uh, so yeah, a little bit. We'll like okay, and we're back. Uh, we were discussing near field communications. Uh, well, we were starting discussing. As I was saying, uh, it's different from Bluetooth and infrared. Infrared, you need to point at another device, right? So that the ports are aligned. Bluetooth, you just need to be within the range, same as Wi-Fi. Near field, you have to be practically glued to the device. So, you're thinking, why is this an advantage, right? Why is this a new technology? Well, you might as well use near, uh, infrared. 
The difference is it's it's like RFID. Like your student card has RFID, right? When you when you stick it to the gate of the university, it passes the information to your student number. Is that correct? With that, it's a bit more advanced. You can pass uh, data files, images, music, uh, game labels, etc. This is uh, an example of this is the Angry Birds Magic Game. Uh, when you touch an uh, Angry Birds uh, carrying phone with another one, you can actually pass new levels to the phone. They unlock new levels. Uh, more developed technology is payment system. If you have credit card information on your phone and you go to a payment store, you just swipe your phone in and you can pay your, your food or whatever you, whatever you buy. This is one of the advantages of near field communications. It's not the only phone to bring it. Um, the Samsung Galaxy S2 has it, and the Nokia C7 has it, and a couple of more have it as well. So that's definitely an advantage. Uh, we're not going to discuss this, there's not much to discuss it at this point, uh, in my opinion. We're going to, however, move to the software. Okay, this is the first and probably last Mio phone. So you're buying a phone which has, there's only one phone with that operating system. The problem with this is that developers will see it as very limited. Right? If you're gonna, you're developers, right? You're programmers. If you're gonna make your own application game, you're gonna make for one phone only, it doesn't make much sense, right? So this is what I want to discuss. Uh, would you buy a phone considering that it has a limited lifetime, right? It will only see an X number of games. What is, what is your take on that? So if, well, if you look at Migo from its time of inception, um, when Nokia first made the announcements and things like that, it's always had this whole cloud of, how can I say, a cloud of... Interrogation, question, questioning maybe? Yeah, around it. And um, from my thing, I'm, I've actually come to the conclusion that Nokia themselves are unsure of where they want to take the Mega operating system. And they've kept on trying to put it in on this phone and that phone, and then you've always got the rumors coming out. But now that we've got a, we've actually got an absolute giveaway yes. here right, on this phone. So now, um, I mean, you've got Intel backing, backing operating system yeah. as well. Yeah. So you've got a whole lot of um, very big parties involved for this project. So, yeah, I mean, if you look at the the usage of operating systems right now, if you look at the markets, um, Android is still very big up there. But if you look at the Android drawbacks, for instance, um, I mean, something as simple <coughs> as connecting your Android device to your car is Bluetooth. It, it doesn't support it. It's not possible. So now, if Migo can enhance these kind of very basic aspects that users would need, I mean, come on now, they have a second go. Of course, yes. Another ex uh, example that I want to give is the one with the N900. N900 has the predecessor of Migo, which is Mayimo. And it's the only phone with Mayimo 5. As a result, Nokia launched the phone, it puts, uh, it's got Angry Birds to develop the game for this, or got Rovio to develop Angry Birds for this. And uh, this is the only recent smartphone that doesn't have Nokia Maps to navigation. So we, because it's an uh, open source operating system, the programmers were very happy about it and they managed to, uh, like I'm saying uh, third party programs, I'm not saying Nokia, they managed to develop the navigation for this. So Nokia practically said, okay, here's the phone, we don't care more about it. And this is what I'm scared that's going to happen to, to the Nokia 9. Uh, what's your take, uh, Mike? Okay, like, yeah, like I said, or the N900, like you said, the new software is the same thing as Apple and N9. Probably it's going to be like in the wilderness, sort of, because people are going to buy the phone and then they're going to be get disgruntled, but, you know, maybe because, because uh, the software doesn't support uh, maybe for more games. And if you want to change the software or something, like that, maybe you're not happy with the software, you can't change. So maybe they they won't be happy with the software. So probably this, the problem is going to lie there with the, the new software. Is it going to be like uh, it's going to be a huge thing, or is it going to be something small and not going to last long, just like a 900? Maybe it's going to die out. It's a, we just have to see with time. So yeah. it feels almost as if we are being used for testing. Uh, yeah, or maybe they have uh, yeah, yeah, we like like guinea pigs for them. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know. They have like they have developed a system for six months and said, you know what, uh, we are gonna, we're not going to continue. Uh, what, wait, we have a phone. Why don't you we just start it? And, you know, yeah. what do you think, Nabil? I think, in my opinion, if I were to buy this phone, I would first wait for others to buy it to see the reviews and what people say about it and about the operating system. Because I don't want to just waste my money buying this because it could be a total failure or it could be a success. Uh, you have to first wait and see what happens. Yes, but what I want to say is that let's, in the first six months, let's say everything is good, you get apps, you get games, you get everything. But you know, a contract lasts two years, at least here in South Africa. So, you know, in the next year, let's say 
developers don't want to make applications in something you left with a brick on your hands or you left with whatever you had last year. Does that sound like a good prospect? Uh, not at all. Because I'm really sure for my old contract, for, old, for my old two years, I'm getting what I paid for. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the thing is, um, if you look at Nokia themselves, Nokia are basically a corporation who have their fingers in everything. They're developing. I mean, you even have the rumors of Nokia trying to develop laptops, and I think they actually were successful. They one the netbook. Yeah, they were successful with that. And um, Nokia aren't, how can I say, they aren't focusing on certain aspects. I mean, they came out as a phone then. So, basically what they're trying to do is trying to look at, trying to get all the avenues there, basically testing the waters. So, I don't think you as a consumer would want to buy one of these test devices, because they're trying to actually find out where the niche in the market is, and yeah, you don't be part of that. And also, that, uh, for many years now, Nokia, I think it's trying to play catch up to Android and uh, oh, definitely, definitely to Android, definitely and iPhone. And iPhone, okay, iPhone. I think it's big in America. You can't actually even Android and iPhone. Big everywhere, I think, but they yeah. definitely want to catch up. They, they, right? They're playing catch up, so that's why they're, they're selling this new software and we're acting like guinea pigs for them. And poor consumer just has to buy. It. Can be fooled by the advertisements, maybe I don't know. So that's what I'm saying. Nokia is this one main thing they are playing catch up. So yeah, we know for a fact that Sony and Main, main most slash Smigo are going to out, and Windows Phone is coming ever since the new CEO came. Mm -hmm. CEO came from Microsoft, so you can already see Windows. Microsoft comes Windows. Okay, so that's the problem for consumers. We don't know yet if tablets won't bring uh, Migo. We don't know if Nokia will bring tablets at all, but, um, but according to rumors, they are testing tablets. We don't know if it's Migo or whatever uh, operating system. So uh, we'll have to see if Migo lasts or Migo doesn't last. LG is also interested in the operating system, but uh, we're not sure if it's going to use uh, the Nokia Qt SDK. That's going to be a problem with developers who want like, to learn a whole new other framework to just make games and apps. Yeah. So uh, it's about time. Yeah. Right. So that concludes our first part of the of the discussion of Nokia N9 and Migo. Thank you for watching.